They swing it around to Moore. Moore 15-footer. That is good. Previously on Courtside with Coquise. Hi, I'm Tori Walner, and I'm here to take you on a tour of my hometown, Milton, Georgia. So this is where it all began. To see what these women are experiencing today is absolutely fascinating. It's hard to, for them to picture somebody playing in a skirt. <laughs> It's not a basketball game. That might be the tool or the, the stepping stone, but it's the feeling of helping take care of your own community that's amazing. One, two, three. Lay the lights! You courtside. We hope to see you. You can see that you were courtside. You were scared you were part of the team, but ain't nothing like here. Courtside. We're going to rally it up. We're going to rally it up. If you want to be courtside. If you want to be courtside. You courtside. March 1st was a big day for Lady Lion basketball. It marked the end of a grueling 29-game slate in one of the toughest conferences in the land. It was senior day, a special time to say goodbye to two seniors who have given their all for dear old state. And it was the ninth annual Pink Zone at Penn State, a day where families came from the far corners of the state to celebrate survivors and join the fight against a devastating disease breast cancer. The day was especially meaningful to one member of the Penn State family who continues her own battle. It started on a Thursday evening. I was at home, um, happened to have an itch, actually scratched, I was getting ready to go to bed. That's when I found the lump. Everything happened pretty quick after that. The following week, the ultrasound and mammogram, they called me three days later and told me it was cancer. When I heard those words, it was about probably five minutes of me being in shock. Um, of course, the natural reaction of crying a little bit, I had to call my husband and tell him. Then I went through the process of, okay, what do I have to do next? What do I have to do to fight this? You would go from feeling pretty good one day to having chemo the next and being down for two or three days. You know, nobody wants to hear the words, you have cancer. The biggest thing that I've taken from this is I have to remember I did nothing wrong to get this cancer. I got it and I had to make myself a better person from the diagnosis to now and just stay strong and fight it for everything I could. Mostly my daughter, <laughs> she's now seven and she is the whole reason that I fought this completely as wholeheartedly as I did because I knew from the day they told me I was going to be here to see her graduate to see her get married and have grandchildren someday. I just finished my last chemo treatment on January 23rd. They have you ring the bell to signify that you are completed with your chemotherapy treatment. Ready? It was kind of invigorating, you know, you got to signify that this was the end. It, it closed that chapter for you, or for me, I should say. It was a sigh of relief knowing that step was done. You knew that I've gotten through it. I wasn't going to go backwards anymore in the way I felt that I was only going to continue to feel better from that date on. I work for the Athletics Finance Office. I handle all the team travel for when the teams go away and they need per diem money. It's amazing that athletics supports not only just breast cancer, but all cancers. I have been to several different pink events this year within athletics, but not to a pink zone game myself. This will be my first official pink zone game. We're just trying to try to take it all in, enjoy the events, and just remember that we're not alone. I'm not the only one out there that's fighting this disease. And so many people are so willing to talk to you and tell you their story and be an inspiration to anybody out there that may be going through this in the future. Just to know that there's people there and cheering you on. Um, I've had a lot of people tell me that I've been a huge inspiration to them because even though I've gone through this whole process, I still have a smile on my face every day. And it's just, I'm not letting cancer get the best of me. I'm getting the best of cancer. Sean Swires is an inspiration to us all and was one of the nearly 700 survivors who were honored at halftime. Survivors from 11 different states joined together as one for the celebration. Um, 
Um, tonight, you could just feel the energy. It meant so much more. It was cool, very, very cool. I certainly felt a oneness um, because there's a lot of meaning when you say a survivor of, of anything. So, you know, that means that you have been through and you've come out winning. So there was a, a true feeling of victory. One of the hallmarks of any sporting event is the triumph over adversity. And that's why people file in to watch any sporting event is, can that team do it? Can that individual do it? And when you bring breast cancer survivors and basketball together, the answer is yes because all these hundreds of survivors have said, yes, we can face adversity and we can win. I'm Kiki Savin and coming up next on Courtside. We look at Coquise Washington's blueprint for success, recruiting top talent and an exciting up-tempo style of play. No look pass down to Alex Harris, lays it up and in. I'm Alex Harris, and you're watching Courtside. Courtside. Coquise Washington is one of the top young coaches in the game today. The three-time Big Ten Coach of the Year came to Penn State with an exhilarating style of play and a position-by-position -position blueprint for success. A former point guard at the highest level, Coquise knows the one spot. Point guard play is critical for our team. Everything starts with the point guard. They're the head, they're the mind, they're the motivation. So when we look for dynamic point guards, one of the first things we're looking for is a high energy level, leadership skills. And we like point guards that are triple threats. They can score, they can create opportunities for themselves, they can create opportunities for their teammates, and because they have that balance, they're really hard to guard. Some of the best to ever play the point have worn the blue and white, earning Penn State the nickname Point Guard U. Span penetrates down the lane, puts it up with the left hand, and good. Good footwork, quick release, and dead-on accuracy. These are the offensive traits of a shooting guard, and two of the best guards ever to play the game did so right here. When we look for shooting guards, we'd love to have another Kelly Mazanti and another Maggie Lucas. Those two players embody kind of what we're looking for in terms of a shooting guard. Somebody who can flat out shoot the ball, stretch the defense, having the heart and the toughness to want to be able to take those shots at the tough moments in the game. Much like our point guard tradition, we've established a kind of a marksmanship a trait here at, at Penn State where great shooters come here and they thrive. The wing position is key to the Lady Lion plan of attack. We look at our wings as our utility player. They can do a little bit of everything. They can impact the game in a number of ways, and they can score in a variety of ways. So we want them to be really athletic, and we want them to be versatile. We want them to be able to move around in the backcourt and do a little bit of everything. So having a tremendous amount of speed is great. Having size, being able to kind of mix it up down there in terms of rebounding and finishing against bigger players with contact, having the handle and having good dribbling skills where they can create their own shot. It's hard to put these players in a box, and that's what we like about them. At all times, we're fast, we're athletic, and we can get up and down the floor and play the style of basketball we like to play. The power forward position is a vital role within the Lady Lions' strategy for success. Coquise looks for versatility, strength, and power. Power forward is the right term. Like, we want them to be powerful. We want them to kind of do the dirty work in the post in terms of battling, playing physically, rebounding, defending well, and then scoring in a way that is personal to them. Witted, takes it down the lane, puts it up, and hangs on the rim and falls. Think about our, our power forwards. We want them to kind of be a versatile post player and be able to impact the game in a variety of ways in, in the post. And the final spot on the floor belongs to the bigs, the shot blockers, the game changers, the center. We love athletic posts. 
So we want post players who can get up and down the floor and can move laterally as well as north and south. Having a powerful presence in the paint, a shot blocker, defender, intimidator on defense, a tough, tough guard one-on-one -on -one because they can score with their back to the basket. People are worried about stopping our guards and um, next thing you know, our post player is sprinting past everybody and they're getting an uncontested layup. So that athleticism and that speed is something that we really look for in our post. With each era of Lady Lion success, they went through a learning curve of adapting to the style of play, allowing the game to slow down. This year's team is taking that challenge head on. As the kids have gotten more experience over the course of the season, they've started to understand how to play fast. It's not just running up and down the court. So we've gotten better at it, um, but it's certainly an area of continued growth for us. With Coquise's blueprint for success and this young team's off-the-chart potential, this team is poised to carry the winning tradition well into the future. Lady Lions on three. One, two, three. Lady Lions! Just ahead, we salute our senior tri-captain. And here's a fun fact. Did you know that the first Lady Lion to coach Tori Wallman is assistant coach Jocelyn Wyatt? I think she was in seventh grade, maybe, so um, she was one of the first teams I coached. Um, yeah, she was a different different kid then. She's definitely matured and under Coquise Washington became a, a wonderful young lady. Walner up and around Zowie deep. The Walner, little five footers up and good. Hi, I'm Tori Walner, and you're watching Courtside. Courtside. Tori Walner's journey to become a Lady Lion started with a trip that lasted nearly 800 miles from Milton, Georgia, all the way to Happy Valley. I enjoyed coming up and being away. I didn't want to go to a college where it was all my high school friends again. I wanted to try something new. I'm actually now getting homesick, so I'm getting kind of excited to be able to go back and spend time with my mom. Now that we have five Georgia girls, I think it's pretty cool. And I always tell Co, like, you're welcome for me getting all these players, but it's awesome. She's kind of turned into like the mother figure of the team this year because she has such a big role to play knowing that she's a senior. But I think she set a great pathway for us, and she keeps setting the standards high for us just to make sure that we're on the right path. I love Toy Warner. We uh, have, you know, a special connection. We call ourselves the fearsome foursome. It means that we both play the fourth position. She came in with the name, and I just went along with it. Um, she's a great leader, very energetic, and she's very understanding. Now in her senior year, Tori joined a talented roster as a freshman. The team won back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back titles during Tory's first three seasons. I would say freshman year kind of came in and Alex, Nikki, Mia, they won that championship. Being able to watch them win that and see all the hard work that they had to go through was pretty cool. Well, sophomore year, same thing. We still had the same leadership. And then it was cool because then my junior year when I started and I got to play really impactful minutes, we won it again. So it was cool to have the transition, get my own impact and win one for the team as well. From freshman to senior year, Tori's rebounding and block numbers increased with her playing time. Her junior year, she started every single game. And in her senior season, she's made her way into the Lady Lion record books at eighth place on the all-time blocks list. And the best performance of her four-year career was on February 15th against Minnesota. She finished with 16 points and nine rebounds on the day including seven field goals and four assists. She's continued to be a strong example of trying to get better. Her season and her career is winding down, st still being incredibly coachable, incredibly positive, and fighting to finish the season on as high a note as we possibly can. Her love of the game fuels her aspirations. I'm going to the Final Four Coaches Clinic, um, so you want to be a coach program. But I really want to go to grad school and get my grad degree. Playing overseas, if that's an option, I'd put off the grad degree to at least go experience that. But I've prepared myself to try and be ready for any of those options. Success on the court is only part of Tori Walner's Penn State experience. She's taken full advantage of the resources afforded to her by becoming a Lady Lion. Her time and efforts in the community, as well as on the campus, have earned her a spot at the top. She's the president of the Student Athlete Advisory Board. 
It's been great. I've just been given the opportunity to come to school on full scholarship. I've been really fortunate to be recognized by my peers, to be among people out in the community that do a lot. It's pretty amazing. Well, we're going to get started. The first thing our agenda was really... She's a very good communicator. She uh, knows a lot of people, and she is kind of integrated in all these different parts of campus. She likes teaching. She likes being a part of the information flow and, and helping people understand things and you know and having that teaching spirit I think will, will help her a long way in her coaching career. She has a heart as big as the ocean. She takes coaching very well. She always wants to get better and it's been very very fun for me to coach her. Her lessons will be passed down you know so we'll lose her body but we won't lose her spirit. We won't lose her leadership because she to me epitomizes what college athletics is all about. I mean, this is a kid who, you know, has played on three Big Ten championship teams and NCAA Sweet 16s, but she's also the president of SAW, and she was on the homecoming court, and she's an honor roll dean's list student, you know, and, and she's in the Athletic Directors Leadership Institute. She has taken full advantage of what it means to be a college athlete, so the example that she's provided will carry on throughout our team, and somebody else will pick up that baton and continue to be that example for Lady Line basketball. Coming up, we meet next year's new faces, our top 10 recruiting class. But first, a look at the lighter side of Lady Lion basketball. She's sensitive, nobody knows that. Look at her. <laughs> first one to 30. What? First one to 30. 30? Wait, you know, see, this is too high. <laughs> and you're watching Courtside. Courtside! This season has given fans and coaches alike a glimpse at the future of Lady Lion basketball. With only two players graduating, the second youngest team in the Big Ten is set to return nine letter winners, including two of their tri-captains, Lindsey Spann and Sierra Moore. These two top talents will give Coquise Washington a go-to, one-two punch next season. Span is this year's scoring leader, while Moore leads the team in assists. Sierra Moore is playing out of her mind, Terry. Not only is she scoring, she's finding her teammates and then setting them up nicely. Candace Agee is poised to be the next big force down low in her senior season. That's a big move by Candace Agee. Kiki Civilian's quick hands and speed on defense will help the team in transition. Kiki Civilian driving inside among the Giants. Kalia Mitchell's consistency and poise on both ends of the floor, especially in rebounding, will be exciting to watch. Mitchell down the lane, puts it up in traffic, off the glass and good. The grace of Peyton Witted's game. The dynamic speed of Alex Harris. The shooting touch of Jenny DeGraff. And the coolness of Dominic Brooks are sure to bring the BJC to its feet next season. I think the experience that, you know, the kids are getting this year and then we add in 
uh, the talent that, that the freshmen are going to bring, and, and I think we'll be in pretty good shape next year. Amari Carter is just very fun to watch. She can score. Um, she has a nice pull-up jumper. I mean, she elevates off her jumper. She's very athletic. And again, both Tanaya and Amari, they do a great job of just getting down the court. Um, they make very good passes. They, they have a great eye for the game. Some of the gaps that we have on the team, they address. Naya Page. You know, Tanaya, she's going to be very fun to watch. Um, she has great vision. She passes the ball really well. She has a nice pull-up jumper, and she's really quick. She's going to get down the court pretty fast. Um, Ashanti, she's, she brings size. She can rebound. She can finish around the basket. She can also shoot from the outside. And Jalen is just a workhorse. Um, she's going to rebound for you. She's going to rebound. She's going to dive on the floor for loose balls, and she's going to finish around the basket. So overall, they're just going to be a fun group to watch. Um, we want to play up and down, and they definitely complement that style. And there's one more new face to join the team next season. A transfer from another perennial powerhouse school. Banks is a lightning bolt. I'm Brianna Banks, and I'm a transfer senior from UConn. You may have noticed her on the bench. She's had to sit out this year per NCAA rules, but she'll bring a lot to the Lady Lions on the court next season. Hopefully leadership. Uh, me and Coquise talk about, about me being one of the biggest leaders on the team next year. That understanding of winning and the work that it takes to win at a high level certainly will rub off on our teammates. I'm just ready to play and I'm going to give my all whenever I do have this jersey on. I'm going to wear it with pride. As the head coach of this program, we talk about each season being its own experience. And you have to take that experience for what it is. So coming into the season, we knew that this was going to be a transition year. And we knew that it was going to be a lot of growth and a lot of learning. And that's what we focused on from day one. But that's who we are as a program. Even when we're playing very well and we're winning championships, we focus on growing and getting better and learning lessons that are going to help us play our best basketball at the end of the season, whatever that looks like. When I look at this team, I certainly see a team that's playing better basketball now for longer stretches than we did earlier in the season. We're obviously not all the way there, um, but it's certainly a team that is much more competitive, much more complete, has a better understanding of how to play on this level. Um, so that's what we've been focused on. And, and as, as a teacher, you know, you just get down and, and you know, down in the trenches and, and you help these kids learn and build off these experiences for the future. As the season goes on, you, you certainly want to take comfort in the fact that the team is growing and that they're getting better and that we'll have this nucleus together next year. But at the same time, you know, our standards are really high. And so I want to see more big steps and I want to see more growth. And one of the things that I'd like to see as we, you know, move into whole season play and then on to next season is just a little bit more consistency. And that's one of the things that I think experience gives you is you can be a little bit more consistent. So that's one of the things that I look forward to seeing from this team in the future is it's just more consistency on both ends of the floor. The focus is on growing and getting better and, and building a foundation for this team that they can build off of um, through, for, for the duration of their careers. Let's go, one, two, three. This has been a production of WPSU.